Hey guys, welcome back to our channel Integral Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And you can check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. We post weekly vlogs. You guys can hit the subscribe and enjoy. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Fanny and Jesse. You don't want to miss out on our conversations. And you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we've got a Patreon. You guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. Everything that you guys are doing is very much appreciated so thank you i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed today be shout out to the person that suggested this today we're going to be reacting to the jazz island in depth story astra rashid so without wasting time let's get into the video well, the, the last and most major position i mean there may be other positions but the last and most major position of identifying at the jazz is that Ad-Dajjal is the man that Tamim Ad-Dari radiallahu anhu met on the island. Famous hadith. Remember, this incident occurred after the con conquering of Mecca al-Mukarramah. So this was one of the last hadith to have been related regarding Ad-Dajjal. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa congregated the people. Uh, when he congregated them and this hadith is narrated by multiple companions like Fatima bin Qais, Abu Huraira uh, and many of the companions. When the Prophet congregated the people, he said Tamim Ad-Dari. Ad-Dari is in reference to his uh, tribe or the area he was from. That he was a man who accepted Islam. Which region was he from? He was from the Palestinian region, meaning what we know as Palestine meaning greater Syria. He was from the Levant, from that region, and Arab from those regions. Some say from the uh, Lacham tribe, maybe. But he accepted Islam. He uh, ascended a boat, he took a boat. It must have been a ship, meaning because they sent smaller uh, boats, uh, which are referred to in the narration, smaller boats to, des to descend onto this island. When they were lost in sea for a number of days, they found an island. And what is mentioned uh, is Qarib. I think the word is Qarib, that they sent small boats onto the island to go and investigate what is on the island. Now, generally people, when they narrate the hadith, they only mention the one famous narration uh, when he met Al-Jasasa, but they do not investigate the various narrations with different questions that Ad-Dajjal asked them. When they observed Al Jassasa. Al Jassasa is described as a, a creature that had hair uh, on the front and the back. They could not distinguish between the front and back. This uh, Al Jassasa is from the jinn, meaning a type of jinn that was a, a deputy of uh, Dajjal. Some people mistaken this for the Adabatul uh, Ard. Some people even took this position. Some scholars, they thought Dabatul Ard in the end of times is uh, Al Jassasa. This is incorrect. Dabatul Ard is a good creature. Dabatul Ard, some of the translators, they end up translating Dabatul Ard as the beast. The correct translation of Dabatul Ard is the earth crawler, a creature that crawls on the earth that will appear from Safa mountain. That is the correct translation of Dabatul Ard. Al Jassasa is a no a type of jinn. Now, Al Jassasa, they saw Al Jassasa, they questioned him, What are you? Because they had not seen anything of its type. Remember, they even amongst these books of Sihar, they have even the types of jinn, 70 types of jinn written down in these books of Sihar, that they tell you the different types and what activities they may do, meaning the different shayateen activities they may do. So when Tamim Dari radiallahu anh, and his companions entered the island, one narration mentions that they entered a village and passed through a village which many people do not point out. This shows that this was an island which, was, which had people dwelling in the island. Additional to that, the, the, another narration mentions that the, uh, they were pointed, what was pointed out to them was a monastery. So this shows some type of religion in that place. And when they were directed towards the monastery, they entered. When they entered, they saw a man 
a, a huge creature, meaning a human being. A Dajjal is a human being. But they mention he had a huge body. This is why in some narrations, meaning that word is used, meaning someone of a big uh, body. He was tied up with over 70 chains. And whenever he would uh, become angry, the chains would move. But the questions that he asked are of interest. He asked them regarding uh, a watering source in modern day Jordan. Whether it has dried or not. He asked them regarding Tiberius Lake, the Sea of Galilee. So the Sea of Galilee, uh, known as Tabaria in Arabic. Tabaria is the western part of the Sea of Galilee. Likewise, he asked them uh, regarding the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether he has defeated the Arabs and is he ruling them? Have they obeyed him? And of course, the companions answered all of these questions that the Sea of Galilee is filled with water. Why is this question important? Because one of the signs of the defeat of a Dajjal is the emptying of the Sea of Galilee. This is why it relates to him. Meaning, uh, when Ya'juj and Ma'juj appear, the Sea of Galilee will be empty or emptied at that time. And this is a sign of his defeat, the defeat of a Dajjal. So it was important for him to know regarding the Sea of Galilee, are people drinking from the Sea of Galilee. This also shows us that he had no information, direct information regarding the world, except through uh, Al Jassasa. Remember at that time there was no Google that uh, Jassasa could have checked on the smartphone, the, the news. No. So any news, he was limited in the news that he could have. And this has great significance for today's day and age. That it's an age of information. That we have information at hand and an age of espionage where spying is very common. So when he questioned them regarding this, some of the questions that he asked was, regarding the the arabs how do they live do they live in tents and simple living they said yes why was this important because in the end of times the arabs would will do away with the the tents they will do away with the simple living and they will construct buildings tall buildings this relates to the other hadith the hadith on the construction of tall buildings in the end of times that when arabs have left simple living and they construct tall buildings which has happened in our lifetime. This is one of the signs of the appearance of a Dajjal. So he, these were some of the questions that he asked regarding how uh, the Arabs live, because this is a, signi uh, a significant sign regarding modernity. And the, the order of a Dajjal is that when it enters a civilization, it does away with the lifestyle of that civilization and brings in the lifestyle of the the new world order so when uh, the the europeans and other nations when they entered different parts of the world what did they do they done away with the med medicine of those people meaning the natural medicines of the people of that, those countries they done away with the housing style of those people the the way of attaining food risk sustenance and they brought in factories and other industrialization, industrializing those places. But likewise, the significance of water, that when he asked about the water in Jordan, and he asked about the, the, the Lake Tiberius or the Sea of Galilee, this was important because this shows in the end of times, water shall be a rare commodity. That water shall become a rare commodity, one of the biggest projects that the UN and Western governments and especially the Zionist state of Israel have is water conservation. They fund these projects. Why? Because he who controls the water has complete power. And this is why the next war, the coming war will be regarding two resources. One resource is gold and the second resource is water. So these questions that the Dajjal asked were important for the end of times and also the civilization that will be established by the, the followers of the Dajjal in the future. So when he asked these questions, Tamim Dari radiallahu anhu and his companions, meaning uh, there are more questions that were asked. They left. When they left, they went to Al-Madinatul Munawwarah, accepted Islam, 
and the messenger, and he, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had this event related to the companions alayhi muridwan, which further authenticates the uh, narration and authenticates the incident that. Very, very interesting video. I mean, um, like you said, the questions were important as to whatever he was asking about has either happened now or is yet to happen. Like, uh, if the Arabs are still living in tents, which they're not, their they're technology is amazingly insane. Um, this story, where is this story from? Is it just from the Hadith or also the Quran? Or is it authentic, I should ask? Otherwise, I enjoyed listening to this. I hope you enjoyed it too. They also spoke about the next thing that the next big thing may be um, revolved around things that we need in our daily lives, like water. He spoke about the Zionists. What do you guys think about the Zionists? Just your own personal um, thoughts, either from what you've been taught and what you've gathered and what you have personally thought. And yeah, the, the others, we can talk about them later. Otherwise, Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.